Welcome to Bungalows for Bachelors. Today, we are entering into the final phase, the finishing phase, all right? We've got everything in our walls, and it's time to start covering things up and make this house look like a home. So, what's the first thing we're going to put on our walls? Oh, we got insulation everywhere. We are going to cover it up with drywall, all right? So, what is drywall? Well, drywall is the process of covering up your walls with gypsum board or sheetrock. It's got multiple names. Uh, and you want to improve the fire safety, sound insulation, and visual appeal of the interior. Over time, there have been many different methods of covering walls with flat surfaces so that we can improve the fire safety and also have flat surfaces to put things on, right? So back in the day, there was just a bunch of wooden planks that were that would overlap each other and go up the wall. And that was just one way they did it. And over time, people have worked on improving materials. And we finally have this drywall product, which is effectively some, it's like a, it's like two paper based layers on the outside and a rock based like material on the inside, basically. So that's what it is. That's why we do it. So major steps. So these are going to kind of vary by trade and who's doing it and also by what finish level you're ordering. But the first general thing you do is you got to hang the drywall sheets first. So the drywall sheets come in multiple sizes that we'll talk about. But the basic premise is you have to, uh, if you're doing walls, you're going to turn them horizontally and you're going to attach them horizontally along the length of the wall with drywall screws or a drywall nail gun. Nowadays, there are very fast screw guns, so screws are usually used. And before you do that, you're going to end up usually putting the, the drywall on your ceiling first. Um, and this, whatever direction the ceiling is going, uh, in terms of the joists, you're going to go opposite that direction. So you're going to want to overlap as many joists as possible, basically. That's the general premise. But you're going to get your ceiling sheets on first, and then you're going to get your upper wall uh, section of its eight foot ceiling, then you're going to have a, uh, a sheet pushed up the wall till it butts into the ceiling and you're going to screw that in. And then on the one below it, you're going to set it down below it and it's going to be just the right size such that you can basically raise it about a half inch or so and butt it into the other sheet. Now, pre-cut studs are designed for that purpose. So an eight foot pre-cut stud, a nine foot pre-cut stud, a 10 foot pre-cut stud are all given the right, uh, they're all cut to the certain size that everybody agreed would be good for installing the sheetrock quickly. So when you deviate from that change wall heights, keep in mind it's going to affect your sheetrock. So that's the uh, basic premise there is you're going to, you're going to screw these sheets on to the wall itself. And then corner beads, uh, if you've ever seen an exterior corner, you're going to have some kind of either plastic or metal structural kind of like bead put on. And it, it looks like, a, it kind of looks like a flashing, but uh, the basic premise is you're going to stiffen up and strengthen up the corner by adding this metal or plastic piece. And that's going to prevent accidents and dings and nicks and things damaging your wall. So got to have the corner beads on there. And then once those are on, you're going to want to make sure that you've filled all gaps and corners with a fast set. So there's a lot of material that fills in a corner, a lot of mud that fills in a corner, and there's a lot of mud that fills in like big gaps you have. So you're going to want to use a fast set thing because it's less likely to shrink and cause cracking in terms of like when, when you put a bunch of like finishing mud on the wall, and it's too thick, it will actually crack because it dries out and shrinks. But if you use a fast set material, it's a little bit different and they don't, they don't crack. So you're going to want to fill your big gaps with a fast set mud first. And then depending on your skill, you can choose a different timed mud, basically five minute or 15 minute or 30 minute, whatever, 90 minute, whatever you want to do. And that's going to basically give you a major, a, a mainly flat place to work with. Because when you're installing all these sheets, occasionally you get gaps and things and you got to fill things up quickly. So that's what that's for. And then once you got all that done, you're going to want to tape and float your joints, which is essentially getting the paper tape, which is a very similar product to the paper facing that is on the actual sheetrock. 
and you're going to join all of the corners, intersections, and you know butt joints and all that stuff. You're going to tape it all together. And when you put that tape on, you're going to basically mix it in with the mud, and it basically turns the whole wall surface into one uniform surface of the same material. And it creates a very, it can create a very flat surface, which is why it's a good product. So once you've done that, you can spray and apply the texture. And the texture is basically the final thing that goes on the wall that makes the, and ma it makes any imperfections in the wall unnoticeable. And it kind of adds a little bit of texture to the wall. It can be artistic. It can do all kinds of different, you know, orange peel. I think that one of the photos showing some kind of orange peel sprayed on. There's knockdowns, there's, you know, like a sponge thing. You can do all kinds of texture with the mud. So that can be an artistic place to show cool stuff. So what what types of drywall are there? Well, so generally speaking, in terms of the types you would buy for the purpose it's for, there's like regular drywall, which is just going to go on your walls. You know, you can get multiple sizes, but there's just, there's nothing special about it. There's a lightweight sheetrock you can buy that's just lighter. It's been made out of a slightly different process, and it's a little bit lighter. There's fire-rated sheetrock, which is you know usually like labeled Type X or something like that. And it's usually 5 8 inch thick. And there's mold-resistant sheetrock which is going to go in areas where you're going to get high humidity. So if you want to maybe put some in a kitchen or you want to put some in a bathroom, usually it's bathrooms where they go. And that's a good place to use that because just they're, the panels are better at resisting mold growth in high humidity areas. And those, are, those are usually green or purple. And yeah, those are some basic types, but generally you can buy them in different thicknesses too. So you can get them in quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and five eighths and potentially outside that range, but you're unlikely to see that in residential. The quarter inch and three eighths are reserved for curved walls or special circumstances where you need to bend the sheetrock um, for reasons, you know, like a curved wall or a curved ceiling. So that's what those are for. Uh, those are not very common. And the half inch sheetrock is the most common. That's just what you're going to cover most things with. And the five eighths sheetrock you're going to use when you want to resist fire safety things. So, and for example, uh, walls between garages and the house, the ceilings of a garage when you have a living space above it, there are places in the code where you're required to use a thicker sheetrock for a safer fire rating. And the whole, the whole fire rating thing is basically, they, they know that if there's a fire in the garage, there is one hour of time before that fire is going to burn through that sheetrock and then burn the rest of the house. And the whole premise on fire safety in a house is not to save the house, it's to save the people in the house. So if you have more time to figure out there's a fire and get out, then you're safer. That's the promise. So width, you can buy the width, you can buy sheetrock in four foot wide or four and a half foot wide. And the reason for the four and a half foot wide is the, the when you take two four and a half foot wide sheets, you get a nine foot ceiling. So that's why you can give combinations of the two to, to get, you know, like an 11 foot ceiling or a 13 foot ceiling. So they make those two widths and lengths. You can get from eight foot up to 16 feet, usually in two foot increments, but this will depend highly on your local supplier because while these are all possible lengths to get, it's possible that people aren't buying these certain lengths. And so they're only going to stock and supply certain things. So the basic premise of the multiple lengths thing is, well, why don't you just install a bunch of eight foot, eight foot lengths? Well, when you're doing sheetrock, you want to avoid as many butt joints, as many end butt joints as possible because they are more work, first of all, and they are also a place that where the wall is going to have to come out slightly because the end joints aren't tapered off, and I'll talk about that in a second. But we want to try to avoid the butt joints. So if you have a piece of wall that's 10 feet here, and there's a piece of wall that's 12 feet here, well, you're going to want to buy the sheets that are just slightly larger so that you can not have any butt joints. You're going to have the like the seam along the the width of the panel, but those are tapered off. Those are fine. That's that's normal. So we, we want to try to avoid the butt joints. And then, of course, the treatment for the mold resistant high humidity. You know, that's one of the special types, special types of sheetrock. 
So edge treatment. So the end joints of drywall are flat and the finish of them will raise up the thickness of the wall. Because if you take a flat thing and a flat thing and you butt them together, and then you need to put tape on top of that and then mud on top of that and then maybe a little bit more mud on top of that to smooth the whole thing out and make it look flat, you're adding thickness. Now the side joints of the drywall actually have a tapered edge down. So within you know three to four inches of the end of the sheetrock, the sheetrock actually gets less thick. It gets a little bit thinner towards the edge and the reason for that is when those joints are butted against each other, there's a little bit of a dip and that dip allows you to put in mud and then tape and then more mud and allows you to get an actual flat edge across the sheetrock that you won't see if when done correctly. So that's why those are done like that. So when you're ordering sheetrock or you're talking about sheetrock with somebody, excuse me, there are many finishing levels that need to be discussed. So the finishing levels is, is basically how nice do you want your sheetrock to look. The, the higher the level, the more expensive it is and the more money and time is going to be spent to get it there. So a level zero would be no finishing. You hung the sheetrock and you stopped. Level one would be you hung the sheetrock and then you put the tape in the mud on the edges and then you stopped. Level two would be, okay, you put that tape in the mud and then you also floated over that tape one time and covered your screw holes up. So in that photo on the right, well, that's a poor example. I think that's a level three. But the basic premise is you've gone over everything, everything once to get it, quote, flat, and that's good enough. Now, a lot of people will stop here. A lot of production builders will stop here in the garage, for example, because the garage doesn't need to look as fancy, and it saves a little bit of money. So, you know, if you ever see just, like, plain flat walls, that are either like this or they're painted white in a garage or something like that. That's, that's why it saves a little bit of money. And then level three would be you've floated everything a second time basically. And what that does is every time you go over it with a wider blade and a little bit more thinner mud, you're going to get a flatter surface. So that's a level three. Level three is pretty standard for general construction and flatness. And then once you want to get above that and get fancier, you can go to a level four, which is where they're going to throw, they're going to float it a third time, and then they're going to sand it smooth once they're done. That's going to get you pretty flat. And then the only way to get flatter than that is they're going to skim coat the entire wall with joint compound, right? So they're going to cover the entire wall with the, with the mud, and they're going to skim that down, and it's going to be basically perfectly flat. That's the premise. So those are the different finishing levels. I need to know, you know, basically what to expect but the level three is the most common you might see a level two in a garage or something unimportant and yeah that's how you specify those things if you'd like to learn more about she rock then go ahead and watch the youtube spec house series episodes 105 through 106 by essential craftsman you guys should watch the youtube video 18 types of drywall explained diy for beginners by home renovation diy oh, i'm missing a second quote there the quote goes at the end of beginners that's the video right there Watch YouTube video Understanding Drywall Finishing and Mudding Tools by That Kilted Guy DIY Home Improvement. And of course, watch more because there's so much more to learn. And yeah, we're here to learn. So I'll see you on the next one.